This is a molar beauty dish. Now, I've only just started using this. Love this dish. Uh, a, a beauty dish is designed, basically, traditionally, the light head will sit in here and will fire. This usually is just a piece of metal that reflects light back in here and spreads out. And it's, it's kind of like a hard light. The best way to describe it is like a hard light with a slightly soft appearance. So it's good for, it can be good for slight imperfections, but it is very, very dependent on the distance to the actual subject. They were generally designed for headshots, but uh, these larger dishes can be used for full lengths. Um, and the great thing, the, the number one reason I like using these is there's no assembly for it, and it can, it's very rigid and strong, and is not susceptible to wind. So basically when you're using it out in location, even though it is heavy, you need assistance to carry it. This is the deep dish version. And being deeper, it does make it a little bit more directional, a little bit more focused and a little bit harder light uh, than what you would get and a little bit contrast. Your shadows fall off a little, a little stronger, shadows become darker as well. And it comes with a nice little grip here that attaches onto your stand. The head goes through here so the head is not carrying the weight of the actual unit because it's fairly heavy um, but still easily easy to transport as you'll see. They do make these in a white and silver, sort of like ripple effect, and that's designed to basically give a better quality light. Uh, but more specifically, I'm finding the fall off, the feathering of the edges, is a very pleasing one. And I, I would probably attribute it to the fact that it's like this. You can also put a nice diffusion sock around it again to make it even more softer and uh, give a slight warmer tone as well. This white does give a slightly more warmer tone than what the silver does. And uh, they have a couple of different reflectors here. What makes the molar different as well is the fact that this unit here is actually an opal glass. So it does allow some transmission of light through here uh, as opposed to being metal and reflecting light back and around. Um, basically the reason why they usually have something here is to eliminate the hot spot that you'll get in the center of the image. But Moller have done a great, great uh, thing with the design of this where basically the, uh, the hot spot is eliminated but allowing greater efficiency of light because you're just not losing that high concentration of light coming through the center. Uh, they also have new diffusion pads that are uh, uh, more of a metal sort of based, I think it is. Uh, whereas this can be a little fragile. But um, next I'm going to try stacked diffusers as well to create a slightly softer look again. But big fan of this. This is the 28 inch SETI by Mola. Uh, they go uh, from a 22, 28, 33 and a 43, which is ginormous. It won't fit in your average sedan, unfortunately. But uh, great lights, um, highly recommended, absolutely. And it, you need a good stand, of course, to weigh it down, to hold it up. Uh, and sandbags, obviously, to hold it down. But a great unit. Lastly, we're going to get to my new big baby. It folds up quite compact, but you're, what you're about to see is going to get extremely large. And I won't tell you what it is, I'll just open it up and you'll be able to see. Again, I like diffusers that are pretty much easy to assemble. Even though this is quite large and it might seem a bit large for this particular area that where uh, I'm showing you this in, this is very simple to assemble. Like an umbrella. It attaches and installs like an umbrella. Okay, so next, really, really simple. You, you uh, screw this in. I won't screw it all the way in, but that screws in like so. I'm going to take this uh, light and we put it straight in like this. Lock it in. So again, it's shooting right back in here. It's a silver finish, which I like because it does allow you the option 
to uh, shoot with a specular kind of uh, result, giving some nice edges, specular edges and highlights to certain parts of the face. This will go through here. Oh, you got to come through the back. Unzip that. That goes through there, like so, and attaches to your battery pack. You basically mount the rod. Again, I've got to move the sable very carefully, like so. You get this. This goes through here and attaches to your stand. Really, really simple. I also have uh, a diffusion, a diffusion layer that can go around the whole outside of the box and allows me to soften the light, effectively again, making it look like a giant softbox. The amazing thing about this is, is that I can stand right in front of it. So I can have this up behind me, whether it be slightly above or directly straight on, and I can shoot my subjects like so. And the best part about it is the light wraps around my body and still hits my subject. Creates nice fill, uh, just a beautiful, gorgeous light. And I can use it as a one light against the wall. I can have them away from uh, a wall. I can have them on location. I can have it up high. I can use it for group shots. Um, I've used this for beauty headshots. I mean, literally, uh, because it is so large, it is an extremely soft light with the diffusion on it. Even with the diffusion off it, if you use it at a close range to your subjects, the light is nice and soft. Uh, the further back you go, you have to pump the power out a little bit more to reach your subjects. Light becomes a little bit harder. Uh, but really, a fantastic uh, light modifier. Uh, definitely one of my favorites, but I don't get a chance to use it all that often because as you can see, you need a lot of space. <laughs> so it really is something for outdoors, or primarily studios, uh, but I'll be bringing this on to all sorts of different scenarios and using it wherever I can. Okay, so here you have it. Here is my basic lighting kit that I'll use uh, on shoots. I won't always use this all at once, but these are bits and pieces that I own, and uh, it's very important to own a basic lighting kit. Uh, I will then uh, rent external extra stuff when I need it. I'll have extra assistance when I need them as well to help me with uh, transportation of equipment as well as setting up of equipment. But, uh, you know, this is an essential lighting kit for uh, a portrait photographer. Uh, everyone has different needs of different light modifiers, but ultimately uh, there's no right or wrong when it comes to studio photography. There are definitely some wrongs, actually, but uh, there are many different right ways of doing it. Some photographers don't like beauty dishes. Some people love beauty dishes. Um, it really depends on your style of photography. I like to be relatively flexible. So my kit represents a very flexible setup that allows me for hard light, soft light, medium light, directional light, wide light, uh, light for beauty, light for setting up uh, sets, uh, shooting different scenes, different lighting positions. And it's easily transportable and folds up to be very, very minimalistic and fit in the back of my sedan.